welcome back to Arizona Midday. If you like, if you think your family is out of control, if you feel like it, you are not alone. Many of us feel like we need an overhaul. That's why today we're getting advice from David Reiser, co-author of Letters from Home, a wake-up call for success and wealth on how to take back the control of your home. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we were talking earlier and I said, you know, I think at one point every family probably feels a little out of control, but why do you think these days people feel more overwhelmed? Well, there's really two reasons. One is everyone's just busy, busy, busy between work, between school, after school programs, everybody's on the go. It seems like there's no time in the day. And second is that parents forget that their job is to be parents first, not to be their kids' best friends. And their job is to raise productive, accountable, and responsible human beings. I know. I think the friend thing is hard these days. It seems like it's, it's kind of gone more in that direction. You are a dad of four. I have four so, boys. So, yeah, let's talk about some of the things you've done to kind of combat that. Well, the first thing we do is we expect please and thank you. And it's kind of funny that that seems so simple, but it's sad that so many children today don't understand that the first thing they need to do is say please and say thank you. The other thing is we hold the kids to high expectations and we set limits. No matter what it is, whether it's schoolwork or whether it's chores at home or helping out, they have to know what they're expected to do and there has to be limits placed as well. And then consequences? And consequences for both sides, for both us and, to, and for the children. All right. Now, what about um, electronics, computers, you know, video games, all that stuff? Um, how does that role play into this kind of feeling of out of controlness in your family? Well, the problem with all the kids texting all day long, oh which gosh. is a problem, and they lose touch with human beings. They can't interact with human beings, and that's a lo lost art, and that's a shame because you don't build communities. So what we're advocating is you have family dinners at least once or twice a week where you turn the electronics off, you cook with your children, you talk to them at the dinner table and try to bring communications back. And you're only asking for twice a week. How twice sad week. is that, though? And you know? We're trying to set reasonable expectations for the parents to yeah. do it. Yeah. Although you say without the after school sports and that kind of thing, I mean, it can be hard for a family. You know, I know uh, my niece is, I mean, she gets off school at three, at four, she has practice until six, and then she gets a break, and then it's something else. Well, sometimes you have to eat late. And you have to tell them that. And sometimes dinner won't be 8 o'clock at night because dad's working late or mom has something or, you, or two of your brothers have something at school and we're going to be eating at 8 o'clock tonight. But we wait and we sit down as a family. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. What about um, as far as educating your child? What role should parents play there? Well, we have two problems. One, we have the helicopter parents, which would like to do everything with traditional education. And two is we have parents have an obligation to create lifelong learners no matter where they are, to teach their children something. But in the educational mode, you have to be careful and not do all the work for the kids. They have to be able to do it themselves. All right, so maybe take a step back. Take a step back and give them clear expectations of what their responsibilities are and hold them accountable. All right, now what about if you feel like your kids are acting lazy or disorganized, how do you deal with that? We've had one of those before. <laughs> Everybody does. I have four kids. So what you have to do is you have to create systems for these kids. You have to talk to them and explain to them. If your room is a mess, maybe it would be better that we organize your room so you have a clean environment. Clean up your desk. Would it help you if we put a chalkboard in your room or a whiteboard or a chalkboard or something to get you organized? and then turn off the electronics. There's no electronics allowed, there's no music, there's no TV so you can focus. So it's your responsibility to help them and then once again give them clear expectations. What about for younger kids? Do you believe in like, you know, the discipline charts and that type of thing? No, but when they're little they have to help out, whether it's putting away their toys, whether it's putting, you know, having a hook on the wall for them to put their towel away. They have to learn from an early age that they're part of this household and they have to participate and help keep it neat and clean and that's their responsibility. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much. I know we could talk a lot more, but you can find more information in the book. It's called Letters from Home. To learn more, you can go to risermedia.com. You see it right there on your screen.